pass through on diversion. We've still got delays along approaches to Homerton and High Street as it's still partly blocked near Glynn Road following an accident. And Kingston Hill in Kingston shut near Kingston Hospital. That's for emergency repairs to a large burst waterway. Obviously, all traffic on diversion expect delays there. Upper Holloway, Seven Sisters Road has a late block between Holloway Road and Hornsey Road after a lorry broke down. In Kingsland, near Dalston, an accident has shut Southgate Road at Downham Road. Three buses on diversion there. And due to a police investigation in Hackney, Broadway Market and Regent's Road are both closed. LBC 97.3 Travel, your next updates in 15 minutes. LBC 97.3 Drive Time with Club Workspace. Co-working space in two central London locations. Resume this at £585,000. Selling a property with Auction House London is easier than you'd think. It's a binding sale at the fall of the hammer, and competitive bidding ensures you get the best possible price. For the simplest way to sell your property, sell your home with Auction House London and get a quick, stress-free sale at the very best price. Well done, 600 Visit auctionhouselondon.co.uk for a free valuation. We all get stressed now and again. Sometimes, pressure from work and other commitments can be too much. That's why Boopa has free online tools and expert advice on ways to manage it. Like help on how to get a good night's sleep. Or on a stress assessment. So you can understand your stress levels and steps to reduce it. Search Find Healthy to see how Boopa's free tools can help you. Boopa, helping you find healthy. This is LBC 97.3. Call 0845 973 Text 84850. Standing in for James Whale, Ian Payne. This is a very interesting discussion. As always on this program, you start with some particular topic and it um, branches out into something wider and perhaps more interesting. It started off with Jamaica's Prime Minister um, on the eve of Prince Harry touring the island in uh, the Caribbean, <coughs> saying that Britain should think about paying compensation for slavery and that perhaps Britain should apologise for slavery. She also went on to talk about the Queen being head of state and saying it's ridiculous in this day and age. And it seems to be broadening out into more of a, a chat about colonialism, whether we're ashamed of our colonial past. It was very interesting listening the other day to ancestors of Indians who'd come from India to Kenya to build the railways, who were then taken uh, when independence in Kenya was uh, assumed. They came to, I think it was Leicester, in fact, and, they, and basically their idea of the colonial past is, well, if it wasn't for colonialism, it wasn't for imperialism, we wouldn't be here now, we wouldn't be enjoying the, the fruits of Britain. Maybe you and your ancestors came from other parts of the Commonwealth, and you think that the empire actually was a good thing. Not necessarily a bad thing, because generally if you speak to people here, and historians here will tell you, and you're certainly taught in school, that you know, our colonial past was a little bit shady, a little bit dodgy, and in many respects quite criminal. Let's speak to Adam, who's in Denham. Hello, Adam, what do you think? Hello there. Well, as far as compensation goes, I think uh, compensation has already been paid by the way of um, the superb relationship that Britain and Jamaica uh, enjoy and the amount of Jamaicans who have settled here and then ingrained themselves in society and have worked well in the society that become part of the British society. Um, I think compensation has been paid. But we must also realise that when... It's what do you mean compensation has been... Sorry, let me just stop you. When you say compensation has already been paid, what do you mean? The account, uh, the moral account, as in um, the benefit to people who suffered the horrors of slavery, their ancestors have uh, quite benefited in the fact that they've been able to settle in Britain, contribute to Britain. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as slavery still goes, the whole slavery was uh, ended in 1806 um, mm -hmm. in Britain, and then the British Royal Navy went out and intercepted slave boats from many other countries which carried on slavery and well, like I think the Portuguese up until about 1880. So, um, yeah, sure, an apology. Okay, fine, he'll never hurt to say sorry. But I certainly don't think compensation, which ultimately will come from taxpayers, and we're talking uh, taxpayers in Britain who have come from a Jamaican background, parentage as well. So, no, I don't think my, our, our taxpayers should be um, sending uh, uh, compensation, which is basically a political act by the... Um, by this um, Jamaican uh, Prime Minister. Minister. Yeah. Okay, thanks, yeah. Adam. Let's go to James in Harrow. What's your view, James? Are you there?
there. Hello, James. Yeah, not there. Okay. Uh, we're talking about the Jamaican Prime Minister hinting that Britain should think about paying compensation. We're also talking about your view of our colonial past. Are you ashamed of it? Do you think, actually, if it wasn't for the British Empire, you wouldn't be where you are now? Or is it a mixture of both, like in most subjects? And also another question that we can touch on is what the Jamaican Prime Minister suggested and repeated, as she's done many times before, saying that she doesn't want the Queen to be head of state anymore. I mentioned before that there are 16 countries where the Queen is actually still head of state. Do you think it actually serves any purpose at all? As I say, Australia uh, recently had a vote on it, and they decided that they wanted to keep her. They were more in favour of keeping the Queen as head of state than those who wanted, um, I suppose you could call it a republic, but is that really the phrase you should use nowadays? Let's have a word. I think we've got James back now. Hello, James. Uh, good afternoon. How Hi. Are you? I'm doing all right. What's your view on this Jamaican... I think England should just leave Jamaica to be their own country. They've done well for them in order for the Queen to be their head of state. But I think it's time for Jamaica to move on now and let them decide their own destiny and future. Right, so, so the Queen should no longer be head of state? Yeah, but in order, like the caller before me said, to pay money and uh, compensate, I don't think that's the option really, because it's coming from the taxpayers. But, like, like they said, apology won't hurt anyone, mm -hmm. but just to leave Jamaica, be their own country, and let them choose their own destiny. Do you not, really you, do not think... a lot that the Queen can do for Jamaica now anyways. Do you not think that that's what's happening now? I mean, the Queen really doesn't have anything to do with Jamaica. It's a figurative head of state, isn't it? But let her officially just have something <coughs> to do with Jamaica, just so the Jamaican people can decide their own future, let them be their own people, and not have any, any more ties. Why do you think that, that some people still want... Or would, you, would you think anyone still wants the Queen to be head of state in Jamaica? <laughs> to be honest, does Britain want the Queen to be head of state? I don't know. Well, let's ask the people who are listening to this programme. James, thanks very much for your call. Martin's in Enfield. Martin, what's your view? Hello. Um, to tell you the honest truth, um, I think there was a programme on last night that talked about the British Empire. Yep. And one of the dangers was it kind of painted the British Empire as something that was great and wonderful. I'm a black, um, black I'm man. I'm not sure about that. I'm not, my, I'm not my sure. Parents, my parents are from Jamaica themselves. And what the danger is, is that the truth of the matter is that the British Empire raped, they pillaged, they murdered, they killed, they, they, they assassinated, they change people's language, they remove their identity, and so to have somebody that's still head of state that actually represents that country or represents a country that actually tore Jamaica apart, that, that brought slaves wealth from Africa, for me that's just negative full stop. Is, there, so, is, there, any, is there any argument, or is there any sort of water in the argument that suggests that if the British Empire had not existed and slavery had not existed, the Caribbean would not be what it is today and wouldn't be thriving? Well, the truth of the matter, if you look at Jamaica's economy at the moment, you see that actually there's slavery still happening because economically they are enslaved still. They've been removed from freedom in terms of they've been set free in context to their independent state. But if you really look at their economy at the moment, they've been enslaved by the World Bank. Well, yeah, I mean, you could talk about slavery in, in lots of terms. You, you, are you Jamaican yourself? My parents are. Your parents are. Do they, what, what are their views on the Queen? Well, in terms of, I don't really know, my parents, one of my parents has died and one of them have emigrated back. We haven't really talked about it, but I've done some research into it, looked on various websites, and what you truly see is that actually the, the British Empire, even though people say it's positive, and even the woman made a comment last night to say that, oh, well, wherever the British went, they've done well, mm. well, they've removed the identity of lots of people. In terms of, look at Africa.